Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome into our Thursday night TGP Devo. It's good to be back with you again as we return to the book of Philippians, or Philippians, Philemon. <laughs> and uh, uh, we, even though it's a short book, uh, have some uh, more things that we want to uh, uh, kind of unwrap for us from a standpoint of spiritual growth. Uh, I'm going to invite you to pray with me as we begin our study tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your word. We thank you that, that even in some of these shorter books that seem to be uh, perhaps less important, uh, are certainly no less important to us because of their brevity. I pray that your Holy Spirit would uh, lead us into all truth, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Not long after I graduated from Houghton College, uh, my wife and I were in a, uh, a church on a Sunday evening service, and the lady who was singing that night shared something with me, or all of us, I should say. I took it uh, and, and have not forgotten it. But it's this brief phrase, uh, I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid the debt he did not owe. And uh, I, that is so true in these verses that we're going to look at uh, as, as uh, we conclude, really, the book of Philemon. And um, uh, just to give a, a little bit of review here, uh, this is one of the Apostle Paul's personal epistles, and it's intensely personal, um, perhaps even more so than Paul's writing to Timothy uh, or Titus, but um, deeply um, from his heart, uh, dealing with this, this problem, this conflict uh, between a friend of his and a brand new believer whom the Apostle Paul has led to Christ. His friend, of course, being uh, the man whose name is uh, on the book, Philemon. And Philemon's uh, slave or uh, servant, whose name is Onesimus. And, uh, of course, uh, this takes place, uh, the relationship that is took place, in the city of Colossae, where uh, Paul was and, and where he met Philemon, uh, likely a man who was very wealthy. And we don't know that for sure, but from the inference, uh, we, we know that he was uh, probably a, a wealthy man who had a large home, at least large enough for the church to gather in his home. And uh, a man who was also wealthy enough to actually have servants, probably more than one, though, uh, again, that's more from inference than what we know actually. Um, the crisis, of course, that Paul is writing to Philemon about has to do with a slave uh, whose Greek name was useful. Uh, that's what Onesimus meant, useful. And uh, uh, we don't know for sure that he stole something, perhaps uh, money, perhaps it was uh, uh, something else that was very valuable. It could even have been that the, um, the offense that Onesipus, Ones, Onesimus uh, created was to leave him at a time when he needed him most, and perhaps his leaving created a situation for Philemon that uh, was costly to him. It, it wound up costing him something, whether that was income, whether it was time, whether exactly what it was, uh, again, we don't know. But um, Onesimus runs away, and uh, he winds up in Rome, and you know, if you were running away or, or maybe you did run away uh, at some point in your life. But 
uh, you might want to head to a big city. And that's exactly what it appears Onesimus did. Uh, and it was it, in the city of Rome, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, uh, Ro- uh, Onesimus meets, he runs into, he's connected with. Again, we don't know exactly how that might have happened, uh, the Apostle Paul. And through that meeting, uh, Paul shares the gospel with him and leads him to Christ and then begins to disciple him. And he grows in his knowledge and understanding of the Lord and endears himself to the Apostle Paul. In that process of discipling then, uh, we learn some things about Onesimus. And uh, again, we don't know the details, but it's how we come to understand this particular situation. All of this is happening while the Apostle Paul is writing the book of Colossians. And it is likely Onesimus or Onesimus and several others who are tasked with taking this epistle to the Colossians back to Colossae and to Philemon, who is leading that congregation, or at least hosting that congregation in his home. And I I say all this in, in a way to prepare our minds to envision this particular situation. Uh, Here's, there's no texting, there's no telegram, there's no telephone, there's only Onesimus showing up at Philemon's door with communication from the Apostle Paul. So just kind of picture that in your mind. And picture the fact that as Philemon opens the door and he sees Onesimus standing here, a flood of emotions is running through his mind. And uh, Onesimus hands him this note uh, written by the Apostle Paul. And this is how uh, Philemon is discovering some of the things uh, that have have happened. So um, as we have that picture in our minds, I want to take us to verses 17 through 21 of uh, uh, Colossians, or excuse me, of Philemon. And uh, we'll begin, uh, I want to begin reading. I'm just going to make some comments as, as I read at verse 17. So if you consider me the... Uh, you being Philemon, your partner, receive him, referring to Onesimus, as you would receive me. Uh, Close relationship now between Philemon and the Apostle Paul. And he's asking Philemon to hand that back, to actually give that honor uh, to Onesimus here. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, Charge that to my account. And then he says in uh, verse 19, I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it to say nothing of your owing me, even your own self. So the, the intent here is for Paul to make it as easy as possible for Philemon not only to forgive Onesimus, but to accept and receive Onesimus, not just as his servant back again, but now as his brother in Christ. And as his brother in Christ, a relationship, peer-to-peer relationship, in a way that uh, uh, Paul wants to assure by what he's telling his friend Philemon here. So let's go back and and look at a word in verse 18. Paul says, charge that to my account. That word charge is an accounting term. And uh, it was used in the Greek language in relationship to accounting. So he's, he's saying, as far as my account is concerned with you, charge it to my account. Not that he ran a running account with Philemon. He wasn't purchasing 
We don't know that he's purchasing anything from him or, or like a store would have an account that you'd have there. But it's a much more personal account. It's a, an account that's based on friendship and more than, than just a casual friendship, deep friendship that had to do with mutual relationship in Christ and the oneness that they experienced in Christ. And then in verse 19, Paul intensifies that by picking up the pen and writing in his own hand that he himself would cover any of the debt. He was saying to Philemon, I'm making this a legal contract because when something was written out, as it was in that culture, it was as if a contract was being established. Um, and so when he says, I will repay it, he's placing himself on the line in our culture today by doing something like that. You could be sued for the effect of that. Not that, not that they were, Paul did that to uh, uh, expecting a lawsuit was going to happen, but I'm just saying the strength of it uh, was, was that strong. And then in verse 20, uh, Paul says to my Philemon, yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. That word refresh is the same word that the Lord Jesus uses in Matthew uh, eleven twenty-eight, 28, uh, when he says, uh, come to me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. That word that Jesus uses for rest is the exact same word that the Apostle Paul uses here as he is speaking about refreshment. So he's, he's talking about something that is deeply spiritual when he says, yes, my brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh, spiritually refresh my heart in Christ in that way. And the word for heart is not the Greek word cardia, from which we get our English word cardiac, but it is a different word. It's a word for emotions, emotions that go very deep within a person that reveal his emotional heart. And so that word heart is uniquely chosen by the Apostle Paul as well. Well, I, I want to uh, wrap this up with just four things that I think this passage of Scripture uh, helps us to see with regard to discipleship and discipling people ourselves who are coming to faith in Christ, growing in their knowledge of the Lord and the investment that we need to have that reflects uh, the Lord Jesus. There is a cost. Remember, Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10. And when he did, the thing that stands out about the Samaritan to me is that he not only took this man and found help and shelter for him, but he came back and paid for his lodging, paid for his food, paid for whatever it was that this man needed in order to get healthy and well again. Uh, the second thing is that there is an illustration here that is uh, what some have called a redemptive analogy. Uh, and the redemptive analogy has a picture for us of the Lord Jesus Christ and his substitutionary work. Onesimus owed to Philemon something that he couldn't pay. Maybe he owed it before he left. Uh, and uh, maybe because he owed it, he left. He knew he wasn't able to pay. Again, we don't know that. But we as sinners have that kind of debt to God that we can't repay. Uh, again, I go back to the phrase that I began with. Uh, we owe a debt. I owe a debt that I cannot pay. He, meaning Jesus Christ, paid a debt he did not owe. Uh, 
Paul offers to pay this debt in a likeness of what Christ would do. That's how uh, Paul saw this. He saw this through the lens of what would Jesus do. And uh, as he saw that through the lens, he offered himself and exposed himself to whatever it was that was the price that uh, uh, Onesimus would need to pay in order to get back into Philemon's good graces. Jesus was willing to cover that debt and Paul was willing to cover his debt. Jesus was willing, he, he was willing when God the Father said to him, uh, he, he, this is the salvation plan for those who are part of the creation. And uh, as the, the God the Father said that to the Lord Jesus, uh, if you will, Jesus said, here am I, Father, send me. And, and uh, that's the kind of thing that the Apostle Paul is communicating here to Philemon. The Apostle Paul assumed Onesimus' uh, debt was one that would obligate him as himself. Jesus took upon himself the obligation of our sin. And uh, as he did, he did it not just for you, for me. He did it for all men, for all time, and for all mankind. Uh, Jesus' debt, uh, what he was willing to do in paying for our debt that would make us free, free as the illustration here between Philemon and Onesimus. And I picture in my mind's eye at Philemon's door as Onesimus stands before him, the surprise that he has at seeing him, the surprise that he has at learning that Onesimus has not only met the apostle Paul, but has also been saved and is now one with him in Christ. The cost of discipleship is worth that kind of healing, that kind of restoration uh, that takes place, that kind of reconciliation uh, between two men now who are brothers in Christ. And in verse 20, this, uh, the last thing I want to share with us is that Christ refreshes us. Just as Paul asked to be refreshed by Philemon, the Lord Jesus Christ through his spirit refreshes us uh, when we are reconciled to God and reconciled to our fellow man. Pray that the Lord Jesus will bless these thoughts to your hearts tonight uh, that you will seek to uh, be the kind of discipler that I will seek to be the kind of discipler that Jesus was, was with both Philemon and Onesimus and seeing restoration and reconciliation take place in uh, human relationships. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening and we'll see you on Sunday.